1977, New Zealand was eager to put itself on the global musical map. And while split-ins were out in the Northern Hemisphere trying to conquer the whole wide world, another band was kicking up dirt locally. I am talking about Hello Sailor, and from their self-titled first album released that year, the track Blue Lady. <laughs> I gotta say, I really love um, his vocals. Um, that's uh, the late, great Graham Brazier. Um, the way that he curls his vowels. Um, Got myself a blue light The way he emotes lines like, um, blue light It's so unique, so trademark. Yeah, um, <clears throat> to help me through the night. I cannot uh, quite put my finger on what is so appealing about that or that riff. It's just so simple, just like a like C major, dun, C, 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 it, it, but it just it just does it for me. And, and then of course the the way the song opens up with it, with his vocals, um, his, his enunciations, and then and then of course that 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 chorus, the way the way it um, d oh the the the, the subtle. Uh, change like key change and and, and um, textural changes with those kind of sexy uh, like call and response vocals like between the band and that that female voice kind of whis kind of that that whispery sort of slightly erotic tone like um, and um, let's see and I am finding that the lyrics to the song have a bit more depth than I even imagined I I, I come in kind of wondering. What would a blue lady be? I'm thinking, is it like blue screen lady? Let's see. I found myself a blue lady to help me through the night. Me and my blue lady will make this chance all right, all right. We'll go out dancing as if cloaked by nowhere time. As if cloaked by nowhere time. I'm starting to think that maybe... Um, We'll go out. I, I'm starting to think maybe dancing is a metaphor for you know what, like in a theater, in a blue move, in a. I'm I'm starting to think that this blue lady is on the blue screen. This this being kind of the the heyday of like the first wave of like CD films, the 1970s. Um, I've got to go, the true blue lady, or else she hit the streets. But you know my true blue lady, she's like a cop on the beat. And me and my love blind, she's a log fire in the night. That last line is quite metaphorical. She's a log fire in the night. I'm trying to unpack that one. It, it's like she lights my fire. She lights the erogenous aspects um okay enough enough said for now <laughs>
Let's see. Um, the lyrics just got even more interesting. She got to be a true lady. She's vicious like a shark. We're going to need an exorcist to help me walk in the dark. And when it's over, you'll be a creature of the night. Another interpretation is that this might be about a guy who's um, in love with a prostitute, in love with a streetwalker. But then again, um, like women of the blue screen oftentimes doubled like off screen, you know, as, um, yeah. <laughs> The first couple of bars of that um, harmonica solo, there was a bit of like female moaning vocals going on, just faintly. That's an interesting sound, very faint, like lyrical guitar, I think. I love this like sustained open cadence section. It's just, it's almost like um, now he's kind of having his fun with the blue lady, I, I guess. We're um, behind, behind like the veils, behind, uh, we don't need, you know, just uh, <laughs> each, each to their own imagination. Hear that? You hear every last note there as, as they were jamming out, and there were there were some slight cadence changes, like thrown at the last minute, like some boom, but like like toward the end there was like a, like a one like four wallops per bar type thing, like and uh, yeah, just playing out to the to the moans of ecstasy and the pleasure of um, you know it, you know the blue lady. Yeah, uh, Hello Sailor, Blue Lady from 1977 up there. First of two albums from the period. Yeah, a big, big blockbuster album down um, in New Zealand. They quickly became like one of the biggest bands in the country. Um, led by the rather uh, charismatic Graham Brazier. I like his performance in, in the videos I've seen from that era. And he had a pretty, um, uh, he was pretty fashion forward for 1977 too. He already had like the tapered, like, like undersides and, 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 uh, pressed, you know, pressed, pressed jeans and all that straight, straight leg. Um, and, um, of course some of his, some of his, his band members had more kind of the, uh, oh, the studio body look that was quite common among rock musicians at the time. Um, but, um, you would see a lot of that mix that combination on the same stage um in some of those acts from like australia and new zealand at that time you, you would see like one guy like with like really short hair and, and like a sleeveless shirt sleeveless maybe um like leopard print shirt and, and tight pants with like um like like sharing a mic with a guy with like a handlebar mustache lamb chop sideburns and and boot cut and like brown vest and all that and um 
you know, the prevailing look of the 70s. And, and uh, yeah, you would, for like 77, 78, 79 thereabouts, the, the, the two looks were kind of sharing the stage in that one place. Whereas up like in England, um, there was there was like a, a huge like like line between 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 those two camps. It's like um, like like the first of those looks I described was like strictly seen on new wave acts, and the second of those looks was strictly seen on like thirty ish um, symphonic pop um, AOR continuing like like veteran acts you know of the time period that were on to like their tenth album thereabouts, and um, you know the <clears throat> and uh and the big um the big irony of it all is that um the bands that that tended to have that sharp look were the ones that had less money to spend on clothes they were going into like thrift stores second hand and buying up 50s outfits and, and just bringing the 50s kind of look back except with a new twist to it so it wasn't. So it, it 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 could actually catch on and become like a new style since it wasn't too retro to be just confined to to nostalgia and uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, enough of, of that. It, let, let's talk about the music. Yeah, great great musicianship, solid like bar band, but creative inspired at the same time. Um, and uh, a lot of great songs on that first album, like um, uh, ranging, ranging from the kind of Hawaiian ditty, like uh, Lying in the Sand, to um, like Latin Lover, with kind of some Spanish guitar runs, um, Watch Your Back, some good like hard rock funk numbers, um, Vermilion, another standout, yeah, um, Last Chance to Dance with some great, rich, full spectrum harmonies to it um i'm really sad to um hear that graham brazier passed away a few years ago i, I maybe i heard about that maybe i didn't but um yeah passed away in 2015 at age 63 heart attack and stroke yeah so uh this one is tribute to him yeah i love what you left behind here during the late 70s um this album and then a second album, Pacifica Armor, where they spent some time in the U.S. trying to break the um, North American market, and um, unfortunately, uh, didn't. Uh, while that wasn't really panning out, uh, they kind of lost some of their standing at home. Um, but uh, the late '70s uh, Australasian scene was just full of these energetic, you know, bands that that had all these new ideas, and and eventually uh, the Australasian invasion would hit pay dirt in some ways i mean uh little river band and then finally um minute work yeah for more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of hello sailor and other bands from new zealand um see the directory of albums by australasian artists linked in the description below and like and subscribe and follow me on social media to know when the next video is coming out and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about these lyrics or their meaning certain lines and and what they may have meant to you or any memories you have of this band and this song in particular. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled tri signing off.